All right, we're speaking with Admiral Doug Ospiornson uh, with the uh, U.S. Navy, uh, Deputy Commander. And uh, Admiral, very nice to have you in the studios today. Appreciate it. Um, uh, you are in the community here as part of a program with the Navy to educate people that don't really have a Navy presence. Correct, that right? yeah. We're part of uh, a program called 5050 that was instituted by the Chief of Naval Operations, uh, Admiral Greener, uh, for 50 Navy leaders to go to 50 cities, especially inland. Uh, we have a lot of exposure around the coast, of course, be it in the Puget Sound area, San Diego, Norfolk. Uh, but what we really want to do is educate uh, the folks in the heartland about your Navy, what we do, why we exist, because uh, uh, we think it's important that you know that, but we also want to be accountable to you. Uh, you support us with taxpayer dollars. Uh, we all pay taxes, and we want to make sure that we're using that money well and uh, uh, in a way that uh, supports American interests uh, both here and abroad. All right. Is this a program you were doing uh, now as a retired admiral, or are you still active in the Navy? Still active. Actually, I'm reserve component, uh, but I do this on a full-time basis. My uh, my job is deputy commander for Navy Region Northwest. Uh, the Navy has divided uh, the um, uh, country into six areas, essentially, that oversee the bases. And so we oversee the bases from Alaska to Wyoming. And I'm actually down here uh, for uh, Cheyenne Frontier Days as part of our 50-50 outreach, but we wanted to reach out to other local communities communities and so that's why we're here so uh if somebody went to frontier days you would you might be there at a booth or something or um, possibly participating in the parade and maybe the rodeo and that type but of stuff. Actually, I'm going to be flipping pancakes tomorrow, Are I believe. you really? I'm really looking You're forward to that. you Kiwanis Club on that. Yeah, huh? I, I did that a couple of years ago and just had a wonderful time. What a, what a great event that's taking place. So I was at Frontier Days a few years ago, and uh, it, it is just a tremendous community uh, celebration there. But uh, exactly right. We're going to be interacting with uh, lots of different organizations. I believe we'll be at the air show tomorrow with the uh, Thunderbirds. Uh, um, and many, many engagements. All right, very good. Now, you've been in, in town. You, you spoke with uh, some folks at the uh, Panhandle Extension Center in the chamber today, and and uh, what type of things did you tell those folks? When when Did they ask a lot of questions? Uh, uh, what did you what did you want to get across today? Yeah, I think that uh, a couple of things that we were trying to get across is is again why we have a navy and and uh, one of the messages that we have is seventy percent of the Earth's surface is covered by water, eighty percent of uh, Earth's population uh, is is close to the coastline, and ninety percent of world trade goes across uh, the oceans, and and that's why we have the navy is to be able to be out and about at any given time. Two thirds of our ships and submarines are away from port. A third are forward. To Deployed to, again to uh, uh, protect and defend and and uh, help uh, American interests uh, abroad and uh, be it uh, uh, in peacetime uh, with humanitarian assistance and disaster relief and then also if need be in wartime to be first in war and and uh, again that's not something we want to do but it's something that uh, we want to have a strong navy in case we're called to, called upon to do that. Yeah, and is it going to be tougher? Uh, I mean, uh, when you talk about this and so forth, obviously. You guys might be looking at the cuts that the rest of the military might be looking at. Uh, how do you how do you address uh, that situation? I know you really don't have anything to do with it, but um, but like you said, you want to use your taxpayers' money as, yeah. as best as possible. We actually, the, the budget before Congress put out by Department of Defense uh, does have a number of, of uh, cuts in it, but we think it's a very good budget. It's extremely well thought out, uh, and uh, we, we believe that we can cut in certain areas and not lose our, our capabilities, but at the same time, uh, certainly wanting to contribute uh, to our entire economic situation here as a country uh, where all of us need to come together and, and uh, you know continue to look at how can we use our resources in more effective and efficient ways so yeah we are doing that okay and uh you know you were talking with dave and me earlier and uh you've got uh, you're also kind of because you're in that northwest area you're in charge of some events there that happen maybe or at least you coordinate some things and help help people get to those those yeah, things absolutely uh we were involved with uh, portland rose festival again all of these events are are designed to uh our participation in them anyway are designed to help educate people about the navy and expose them not only to our ships and submarines and airplanes but even more importantly our, our people probably the best and brightest i've had the opportunity to serve for over 30 years now and i i can't tell you how proud i am to serve with the young men and women that we 
we have in, in today's Navy. Innovative, hardworking, creative, compassionate, uh, uh, passionate about their work, uh, really some very, very fine folks. Is it a different naval officer now than it was 30 years ago and then when people come into the Navy, do they have a different mindset about it? I mean, probably maybe with the technology makes it different. Do they have a different mindset to say than they did? You know, I, I think that uh, yes and no. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, no in that I think that there's still this urge to serve, which is fundamental, uh, to, uh, to do the things that uh, we need to do and, and uh, love our country to, to provide that service. Um, the quality of, of naval personnel, both officer and enlisted, is pretty phenomenal, especially with the tech-savvy young men and women coming in. I'm glad I don't have to compete with them because I, I just don't have the, uh, the same skill sets, especially in technology, as these, these folks do. They really are bright. So uh, uh, know in the case of the same fundamental values are still coming in of loyalty and, and pride in their country and willingness to serve, but definitely some skill sets that we did not have coming in 30, maybe 20 years ago. Yeah. And uh, it seems like when you look at the, the folks in the military, many of them are from the Midwest, many of them from this area, you know, uh, um, maybe not as much as the coast, but in the Midwest, and those are the people that say, you know, I have a duty to serve, and that's yeah, and that's the situation. I think there's a lot of that. Although, you know, when we actually look at the demographics of not just the Navy but the military as a whole, realistically, all portions of the country are well represented. Um, but there definitely is uh, a level of patriotism in uh, inland America, and uh, that uh, is just kind of part of the value system, especially in in rural America. That uh, that people bring to the table, and, and we certainly appreciate that. And when you go to places, I know, I, because I know you're going to make an appearance at the Rotary Club today, and you did the chamber thing, do you... Do you do you have a PowerPoint presentation? Or? Yeah, we do. In fact, uh, we have a, a basic PowerPoint presentation that, uh, again, shows where we are, what we're doing, why we're doing it. Uh, it's really designed to stimulate a lot of questions, and typically we, we do have a good Q&A session afterwards to make sure that we can uh, hear folks' comments because uh, what uh, part of what we want to do is really that interaction. That's the beauty of this is to have the opportunity to, to talk to folks here uh, in Scotts Bluff uh, in, in this general area just because uh, uh, it's great to hear uh, hear what those questions are and to be able to clarify some of the the things that people do understand but there's a lot of misunderstanding as well so maybe what uh, what's the biggest thing people misunderstand about the Navy is is that the Maybe there are more careers in the Navy than they think, or what? Yeah, I think that's one of it. But uh, but the number of things that we're doing around the world is is probably the a major takeaway that people get. It's like, wow, I had no idea you were interacting in so many countries, especially being proactive. Uh, for instance, um, our humanitarian assistance and partnership for peace programs, where we have CBs literally in uh, multiple countries around the world, building hospitals and roads and schools. Uh, we have our SEALs as advisors in multiple countries, helping uh, militaries become better at what they do, uh, from uh, drug interdiction to uh, uh, patrolling various places, to working uh, uh, to keep uh, ships safe from pirates off of Somalia. We are literally all over the world. Uh, and so that's probably a, a major takeaway that people get. Do you guys get well accepted now, the, the U.S.? Um presence around the world is it is it better now than it than it say it was what's uh, or I think so I think our, our reputation um, uh, again because of our proactive work in in partnerships but also our response uh, for instance I, I would say uh, maybe our uh, relationship with Japan is is maybe the strongest uh, we've seen uh, in a in a long time it's always been strong but it's even stronger because of our response to uh, uh, the devastating tsunami that took place in Japan, uh, and then also their reactor uh, that was uh, degraded and, uh, and all. So we offered the technical expertise, but we also offered very, very practical uh, support, be it uh, uh, making water to uh, getting medical supplies in there. We uh, responded very strongly uh, in support of Japan on that. That would be just one example of many things. For instance, when we went down to Haiti, we were down there uh, in, in a big way uh, helping with that disaster as well. So we respond and, and really reach out to folks yeah you have a lot of people say boy i'd like to go on a be on a ship just for a day or 
And we can do that. Yeah, you can do abs- that? Absolutely. We're very interested. We have a number of programs. Uh, in fact, coming up next week is Seafair in the Seattle area. Uh, we have two days of ship rides to help expose people to um, the, the Navy, what we do, and especially our sailors. So if somebody from here wanted to do that, they weren't going to Seattle, but they were going to someplace else? Yeah, as long as we have enough uh, enough notice and, and we can work it out, uh, we are always interested in uh, educating people. And there's no better way than to actually get them to tour a ship, talk to our sailors, uh, see the technology and, and the whole package that the Navy uh, has to offer. All right. Admiral, it's wonderful to see you. Wonderful to have you stop by. I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate much. the opportunity. Thank you so much. And a uh, wonderful community. I just got in here a, a couple of days ago. I had a chance to look around a little bit, but uh, what a fantastic place. Thank you for uh, hosting us. You bet. You bet.